Here we go again. Hey, this is another episode of Marriage Covenant 101. And I'm your host, Chadwick Cruz. Who are you? And I'm um, co-hosting tonight, Tamika okay, Cruz. Okay, okay. So tonight we're going to take it back to the original, what this show was all created about, marriage and covenant. So, but before we jump right into it, so my wife planned a parade for the kids, the Independence Day Parade. And I just want to show you some beautiful kids and some people who really love kids. Listen, if you're trying to be in a top tier child care facility, I'm talking about one that goes over and beyond for the kids, faith-based, teaching them about God, but also showing them how to walk by faith. Listen, Bright Futures, location one and two, is the place you want to be. We got a first class pre-K program coming. We already have one year of successful in the book. Now we're getting ready to start on our second pre-K classroom. We're looking for some awesome teachers to come and be a part. We, we probably about five, six kids down on from about 10, about 10 kids from being able to fill up our second classroom. Listen, if you want your kids to learn, I guarantee you when they enter the school system, they're going to be in the top of the class because they're going to already know the fundamentals to kindergarten before they get there. Probably they're going to be on a first or a second grade level. You probably should go and ask administration to test your kid because they're going to be over and beyond what the rest of their peers are just because they came to Bright Futures Children's Center. Now, this is the Independence Day video from location one. But before I show this video, I'm going to let my wife line it up because she didn't even know I had the video. See, I'm doing this right now. But we're going back to marriage. But in marriage, a good husband always compliments a great wife. What you going to say? <laughs> So this little parade, um, it was giving the kids a chance to just and uh, express themselves in learning through play. Um, so they were able to bring their bikes, their tricycles, whatever, scooters, whatever their parents um, had for them at home, and they brought it to school. So we tried to do a home school correlation, um, and it was a great time. And I think the kids really loved it. The staff loved it. It was just a great time for kids to just be free on their um, bikes and stuff. So play that video, brother.
And see, that's our main priority, to be the best child care provider. Now, that was location one, which, is, which was the starting point of this journey that God has put placed us on. But now, I got to bring you my other favorite group. I don't know who's the favorite. I don't have a favorite. I just love them all. I try to spread myself like mayonnaise back from both centers. But I'm going to let my wife line up this next video from Location 2. So Location 2, same thing. We um, um, allowed the kids to bring their bikes, tricycles, scooters, whatever, from home, again, to be a homeschool correlation in, um, um, for kids. They had a great time. It was also fun. Um, we had it planned for them to do one thing, but they just expressed themselves and did whatever they wanted to do. So, <laughs> yeah, the order, the order from that, like at one, they was going around in a circle. They and, just did their own thing. But over at two, they was going all kind of ways, kind of clockwise. But I ain't never seen kids going all kind of directions, but no one was bumping into each other. Like, I was like, wow, they really watch out for each other in any direction. And you know what? It's kind of like life and like a marriage. A marriage sometimes go in all kinds of directions, but the husband and the wife has to have each other's back. So this is something right here, location two, that my rib here put into action. So play that next video, brother. So I was told um, about at 9.30 I need to be at location one to ride my four-wheeler and get in front of the parade. Now, I don't know how that was going to work out because people were moving and moving, and those kids were really riding. They probably was faster than me on my four-wheeler. But um, I thank God for what he's been doing in our businesses. But with that being said, we're not. this is not about actually from a business standpoint tonight, we're gonna to talk about marriage. It's so many people who are barely hanging on. Some people feel like they're at their wits end. They feel like they're at their last thread, at the end of their rope. But see, let me explain something to you. You're in the exact place in your relationship that God wants you to be in because See, sometimes God does not change your situation until you change. Hmm. I'm going to say that again for the people in the back row. Stop praying for God to change your situation until you change. 
It's got to be a change on the inside of you. See, life is filled with choices. What choices are you making towards a prosperous, healthy marriage? So, what, ch what two choices are you making towards a prosperous, healthy marriage? I know that's real. <laughs> y'all, she telling y'all the truth. Y'all better listen to it. So, the first thing, um, to make some choices for a healthy marriage is number one you have to put God first that's it that's the most important thing because you're not going to make it without him being first and your first priority God prayer having you know a dedicated prayer life to um, so God can speak to you and help you navigate through life within your marriage and? Um, and a second one I would say is communication. Communication. Um, to be able to talk and be able to c communicate how you really feel. Not to not communicate, not to walk around and not say anything when you're upset, but express it. That hurt me when, or I don't like it when, or, you know, that Kinda type Kind of like thing. what I was doing last night when we was walking, right? <laughs> no. What no. I said, what I said, and you said, well, hey, I, you, I'm not a machine or a robot or something you said, but, you know, kind of like along those lines, right? Yes. Okay, okay, okay. So what I want people to realize, the things that you did to grab that and reel that significant other in, those things you got to keep up with because, like, you don't want a person to feel like um, they are in the same house with you, but they don't exist, or feel like the attraction that you had from the beginning has left. You don't want a person to feel like that, or maybe they're like me, who have when I got when when you got together, I was 110 pounds soaking wet, maybe 125, but now <laughs> I'm sitting up here going to the dietitian. Um, Close to a big number, but I have lost 21 pounds, y'all, 21 pounds. But I'm sitting up close to a big number, and now the love that she has for me, I would say, is the same as when I was a little guy. Now I'm a big guy. But she did, let me tell you what she did. Took me to the dietitian. She set the appointment, and she said, baby, I'm going to handle it. And she handled it just because she knew that my health was important to the further of our family. But on the other hand, thank you for what you did. But on the other hand, like this is kind of about, I'm telling people with relationships and married people that they can make it if they hang in there. But, you know, it's some foundation. I know I heard my friend, my good friend, um, Pastor Edward Douglas at Living Covenant, he said one thing when we had him on the show. He said, see, it's kind of like the triangle effect. You have the man and the woman at the bottom of the triangle, and you have God at the top tier of the triangle. See, as men and women, we worried about getting closer to each other when we should be getting closer to God. See, when you get closer to God, if you're sitting at the bottom of the triangle, the you and your significant other, as you get closer to God, guess what? You, your status is changing. You're moving up, but you're getting closer to God. But guess what else you're doing? You're getting closer to each other. And it really makes a whole lot of sense. So remember, the devil's going to fight you every step of the way because the devil is against commitment. When, when God created Adam, he blew the breath of life into Adam, and Adam became a living being. Then he seen Adam working and everything, and he said, you know, it ain't good for man to be alone. So he put Adam in a deep sleep, and he went in his, and he opened him up and took out his rib. And from his rib, he then later on created woman, Eve. Well, see, that was the beginning of covenant. That's why we call this show Marriage Covenant. The covenant, two people making a bond, making an agreement, they make it. Even if it's a boyfriend and girlfriend relationship, that's a covenant. It could be because it's a relationship. It's been established.
So what now what you do is work hard until that day when you both are going down, where the woman is coming down the aisle and you standing up there at the front, ready to make it public that, hey, this is the person that I want to spend my life with. I found my real. Or the woman say, I found, actually, she'll say this after y'all are together. She'll say, well, I found the place where my rib goes. But he found, her rib came and found her, because the Bible say a man that finds a wife, finds a good thing. That's right. So women, stop looking and let the man find you. And with that in mind, I want to say this. You may be struggling in your marriage and feeling like you're at the breaking point. Please don't give up. Your best days are ahead if you hang in the fight. Sometimes, I'm going to say this, 75% of the time, we forget the main thing that got us to the point we are today, and that was the grace of God. The unmerited favor that's been on your life from day one. We have to be, as people, learn to commit. Quit using a person up and throwing them away. You have to learn to commit. And you single people, your commitment should be to God. Commit yourself to God, and he'll send you who he has for you. He will give you the desires of your heart. Some people got crush on all kind of actors. Well, he'll send you exactly what you're looking for because that's what kind of God we serve. But first you have to surrender your being to him. See, Satan is trying to destroy your marriage. He's trying to destroy your family. He's trying to destroy members of your family. He's trying to destroy your commitment with God. Because if you know if he can get between that relationship, if he can put a wedge in that relationship, you know where the wedge starts? A wedge starts small, but it separates. And once he gets you so far as the east is from the west, from God's will for your life, he feel like, pow, I got him. Now he got you out in the deep water and you can't swim. But see, God gave you a significant other that could swim, that can save your life. But guess what? You're so hard-headed, and you don't want to compromise. You don't want to have a conversation. You don't want to compliment the other person. That's how you keep the relationship fresh and new, no matter if it's 20 years down the road, 50 years. Like my mother-in-law and father-in-law, right now, this year, they're going to be embarking upon their 50th wedding anniversary. And I compliment Pastor Willie C. Burks and Sister Lavonia Burks for 50 years in because that's a long time to stay with someone. But I know they must have, they have had to have mastered communication skills. They had to because you can't stay with nobody without communicating because after a while you just say, shoot, I'm getting my stuff, I'm loading up my car, I'm going to stay wherever I can stay at. Get away from you. That's what it leads to. So you remember. You wouldn't have to do that. Huh? You wouldn't have to do that. The devil used situations and problems to distract you without you even noticing or paying attention to where God is taking you. So now you don't see where God is taking you. You're worried about only what you're going through. And see, then your attention begin to shift away from God. It's shifting, leaving God, but you focus now on your problem. And now when you focus on your problem, guess what they're doing? They're amplifying. They're getting big. Oh, she thinks she can go out and do what you want to do and don't tell me. See what I'm saying? So now your problem, oh, I was gone, I was shopping, I forgot to pay the bills. I forgot to do this and I forgot to do this. I forgot to cut the grass. I forgot to take out the garbage. See what I'm saying? Just those little things. Now the problems have amplified so big because guess what? We both were focusing on the problem. Instead of focusing on the problem solver. God. So 
we have to let the devil know that no matter how big the situation and the problem seems, God is even bigger than that. Stop telling God about how big your problem is in your marriage and in your home and in your family. Stop telling God the same thing over and repetitively telling them the same thing about this same big problem. Start telling that problem how big your God is. That means stop going to God telling God, oh, I need this and I need you to do this and do this. No. You tell God, come to him with adoration, telling him I thank you because I know you the most high. I thank you because you, we know that the earth is your footstool. I thank you because you are the great I am, Jehovah Jireh, Jehovah Rapha, Jehovah Nisi, Jehovah Salome, Jehovah Makanu, Jehovah every one of them, Elohim. You all of the above. So now I believe that my problem has minimized because my faith was tried, but now I see my God is bigger then my problem. Come on, Miss Cruz, before I start shouting in here. Come on. <laughs> you better talk to me. Tell these people something you're about doing man. Good, you need to tell you're doing people, good. You need to tell these people something about man. You're doing good. Things be hard. Time. We go through hard times. Don't y'all out there in the coverage area, y'all better watch how we acting on set, because it's us. Y'all better see that sometimes, you see, sometimes she look at me like I'm crazy. Cause that's the same look I get at home. See what I'm saying? You see it, you see it. But stop putting on in public for people. Be your original you. Be yourself. Because everybody else is taken. Everybody's taken. You can't be me. I'm taken. She's taken. You can't be her. Be yourself. And let me tell you something. I, I experienced this the other day. I had a guy, he kept telling me, yeah, you know, me and you, we the same, we doing good. No, we're not the same. You can't compare yourself to me and neither will I compare myself to you because my struggles are not your struggles and your struggles are not my struggles. My situation is not your situation. We all make sacrifices to be in the place that we are in. But don't let them sacrifices separate you from the love, separate you from the love of God. I'm going to tell you what the sacrifices are. You know how many days me and my wife and I, everybody said, well, entrepreneur is the thing to be. And maybe it is for everybody, but it ain't for everybody. Cause you know how many times that I don't went to work sick? I had to go because my family depended on me going to work. And I had competitors out there. I don't have the only barbershop in Alabama. I'm not the only guy that do flooring in Alabama. So when I have jobs and attached that hand, no matter if I'm breathing, I got to be there. That's how my family eat. See, we got to find some importance in our relationship to know that, hey, we can't let finances be the destructive point of our relationship. Same thing about my wife. I seen her get up and go to that daycare a million days. Not no million days, Lord forgive me for that, but four years and running and it was time that she was sick. We had a four wheeler wreck last week. Her arm rotated Not last cup. week. Baby. Week before last. Three it's been, it's, this is like the fourth week. Okay. And my arm is it's still, still sore. sore. But she's still having to go and perform the tasks that are at hand. Because it's important for the well being of our family. See, we have to find some things that mean something to us and put our best effort forth to accomplish these goals that we have set. Did you write your vision? Did you make it plain? Did you take it and write it down and you know what you want out of life? Do you know what you want out of your marriage? Do you know what you expect out your significant other? If you do, then they should know the same thing. Because you should have conversated with them and told them, like, look, this is the goal for the family. This is the family trajectory. This is what we're trying to be at. See, right now, we finna pay some bills, because I done got too deep into this. Let's pay some bills to our awesome sponsors. So we have 
Imperial Painting and Design Company. This is Mr. Jacoby Cruz, owner. He can be reached at 334-733-0894. And then we have Soul Colors with the new clothing line, Pray Under Pressure. Their collection is available now at www.soulcolors.com. Or you can go to their Instagram at Soul Color on Instagram and you can make a purchase there. And you can also, if you, you get 10% off if you use the code word PRAY. Soul for color. Soul Colors, my bad. Then we have Mr. J. Cruz, Jamari Cruz, the barber. Um, he is located at Cruz Barbershop and Moore, and that is at 1110 Andrews Avenue, Ozark, Alabama. Um, for appointments, you can call 334-400-6270. That is J. Cruz, the, the barber. barber. And then we have Miss Caitlin Johnson, the makeup artist who's making movie stars out of ordinary people. Listen, for your appointment to get your face beat up, call Caitlin at 334-405-3428 or go on Facebook and leave her a message at Caitlin Johnson. Platinum Motors, the Platinum Motors family would like to encourage everyone to go out and get your COVID-19 vaccination and they're asking everyone to stay safe, Alabama. This is Platinum Motors with um, Mr. Tracy Lee and Jennifer McLeod. And then we have my good friend, Jean E. Casey at 21 Gateway Realty of Ozark. Listen, if you're in the market for a house or they do handle some rental property, give Mr. Casey a call at 334-379-9048 or you can send them an email at gene.casey at troycable.net, or you can reach out to them at www.sellingozart.com. www.sellingozart.com. Mr. Gene Casey. Then we have Bishops Framing and Trophies. This is Mr. Danny and Mikhail Bishops. They are located at 141. East Broad Street in Ozark, Alabama, and you can reach them by phone at 334-774-3784. And then we have Bright Futures Children's Center, location one, where we're letting our light shine. Listen, we are hiring and enrolling, and right now, if you need to call and check on availability or See if you can get something to coexist with your schedule. Give Tamika B. Cruz, director, owner, operator, all those titles a call at 334-774-3003. Um, we have Miss Ursula Wilson, certified registered nurse practitioner, and she's also a certified diabetes educator. Um, for all of your diabetical needs, she will talk with you, educate you about the do's and the don'ts of um, living a healthy um, lifestyle um, relating to diabetes. So you can call her at 334-798-9077 or email uwilson425 at gmail.com. And then we have Ms. Tina Atkins, sale consultant at Gillen Ford. Listen, if you're in the market for a new or used vehicle, Give Tina a call at 334-379-0672, or you can call her on the business phone at 334-443-1000. That's Ms. Tina Atkins, sale consultant at Gillian Ford. Uh, Bright Futures Children's Center um, 2, um, we're still letting our light shine. We are also enrolling four-year-olds. If you know of anyone who has an eligible four-year-old who will be four, on or before September 1, I need them to register for my pre-K program. Mm -hmm. We have about 10 slots left. Come on, get in, you can get in. There's no um, random selection. We'll just put them in as you register them. 
So give us a call, 334-443-0497. Then we have Cruz Barbershop and more. We are cut above the rest. We are located at 1110 Andrews Avenue. Listen, if you're looking for a nice style or a gentleman's haircut, all races, call 334-733-0615. Get you a, an, an appointment immediately at Cruz Barbershop. Um, we have True Praise um, with their single, I Believe. Mm -hmm. They are 4016 Highway 51 South, Colorado, oh. Alabama. Um, for all of your booking and um, contact information, call Mr. Roy Daniels at 334-303-5178. Oh, I'm a believer. Then we have Thornton Remodeling and Construction. No job, too big. No job too small. Call Crystal Thornton at 334-723-6425 and Jermaine Thornton at 334-655-6196. Thornton, Remodeling and Construction. AICDC, this is Accelerated Innovation Community Development Corporation. They are building one community at a time. For information, you may contact Mr. Chadwick Cruz at 334-733-0615 or email AICDC2021 at gmail.com. Then we have Beyond Fundamentals Basketball Training, LLC. Learning the game one the professional's way. We're teaching people to be professional on the basketball court and in real time, real life basketball situations. Listen, parents, if you want your kid to be a star one day, go reach out to Roy Daniels. He has over 25, 35, 40 years training people to play the game of basketball. Give him a call at 334-303-5178. That's Roy Daniels. We have Finish Line Tires in Ozark, Alabama, 334-774-7744 for all of your um, needs for your car. And then we have Solutions. When impressions count, count on Solutions. Listen, they specialize in signs, LED signs, printing, banners, promotionals, t-shirts, tags, license plate, and much, much more. Listen, call Tom Littleton at 334, um, what is Tom's phone number? Um, I, I don't see it. No. Oh, 774. <laughs> 0408. <laughs> give Tom a call. Y'all got to overlook me today. Listen, give Tom a call, and I promise you, you will be satisfied with the design that he creates for you. Tom Littleton at Solutions. Splash my canvas. Um, you can contact them at 334-237-0052, or you can email splashmycanvas1 at gmail.com. They have a balloon bar and balloons for all occasions. Then we have the Galilee Missionary Baptist Church. It's located on three at 331 Common Loop Road, Midway, Alabama, 36053. Hey, come worship with us. Every on first and third Sundays, Sunday school start at 11 a.m. Worship service starts at 12 a.m. where Pastor Willis C. Burke is the pastor and I myself, Chadwick Cruz is the associate pastor. Now what you said? 12 noon, not 12 a.m. 12, yeah, 12 noon because 12 a.m. that's in the morning. <laughs> Ooh, we, that's in the morning. But we are in the morning. But yes, Galilee Missionary Baptist Church, Coma, Alabama. And we have um, Miss Ursula uh, Wilson again with Primerica. She is our representative um, for all of your um, 
insurance needs, Roth IRAs, retirement accounts, health insurance. She has a lot of um, uh, good um, items for you, your family, or whatever. You can give her a call on her cell at 334-798-9077 or her business phone, 334-887-1155. Or you can email uwilson at primerica.com or you can look up on the website, www.primerica.com slash uwilson. And then we have roofing and restoration. That's Forbes Consulting. And to, con to contact them, they, it's simple and sweet. You go on their um, website and leave them a message there, and it's ForbesRoofingAndRestoration.com. And we have Kenny Unique Savings. He is located on 102 Main Street, Brundage, Alabama. For um, you need to talk to him or ask him what he has in store, you can call 334-268-2149. He really is so man child though. Then we have Trey Avan at State Farm for better rates and best value. Give Trey a call at 334-774-2557. Like a good neighbor, Trey is there. Thank you to all of our continued supporters of thank Marriage you, Thank Covenant you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. So we're talking about Marriage Covenant 101. So I just want to make this bold statement. And I want you to repeat after me, okay? Satan, you will no longer distract me. Satan, you will no longer distract me. Satan, you will no longer distract my kids. Satan, you will no longer distract my kids. You will no longer steal my joy. Satan, you will no longer steal my joy. You will no longer steal my peace. Satan, you will no longer steal my peace. You will no longer attack my family. Satan, you will no longer attack my family. Satan, you will no longer attack my business. Satan, you will no longer attack my business. Satan, you will no longer attack my community. Satan, you will no longer attack my community. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. We decree, we decree, we declare, and we declare, you are under our feet. You are under our feet. No more. No more. No longer. No longer. Will you trespass? Will you trespass? Will you harm? Will you harm? Will you do anything? Will you do anything? To God's people. To God's people. Now, I want to say, I am one of God's chosen people. What you think? You got to say that declaration for you too. I am. You are. You are. One of God's chosen people. Yes. Now, I'm going to tell y'all something about me. It's so hard when I'm on this show to leave my Ebonics at the barbershop. Because this lady right here, she's going to go back and look at this and she's going to critique it. She's going to say, see there, you messed up right there. And you said this right there, and you said that right there. But one thing I want her to know when she critique it, remember the declarations we made. Because making declarations is the foundation of a great godly marriage. And tell them people who texting and calling your phone if it ain't Jesus, we on Marriage Covenant 101. So let me say this. Instead of focusing on the problems that you have in your marriage, instead of focusing on the problems you have in your relationship, instead of focusing on the problems that you have on your job, instead of focusing on the problems that you have in school, instead of the focusing on the problems that you're going through in the community, Focus on God and all the rest will diminish. When your love and your desire for God increase, 
all of the problems starts to decrease. They mean nothing. I, I heard an old guy say it. A mountain is only an ant bed to a high stepper. God have ordained us to conquer and go over mountains. But guess what? A marriage is built upon more than love. Play that video, bruv. Yes, yes, yes. Neglect. Infidelity. Irresponsibility. And what else the other one was? You forgot. But see, those are some of the things that actually tear a marriage all into many pieces. But see, we have to be strong enough to know that no matter what come or what go, we say, I do. For better or worse, for richer or poor, in sickness and in health, to death do us part. Did you say that too? You did, didn't you? Come on back with it, bro. Let it come back. Come on back to me. Come on back with that video. Bring it on back. Bring it on back. Write this down, please. 
successful marriage is a result of the application of knowledge, not the exchange of love. You can be in love, young man, all you want. It doesn't make your woman the right woman. You can express your passion to this man all you want, but that love for that man won't make him the right man. And we need to get this fast because you see, in the book of Proverbs, verse 4, chapter 4, verse 7, it says, Wisdom is supreme, so get wisdom. And in all your Understand what it is to be a woman, what it is to be a man, how to live with a human. You want to understand the idiosyncrasies of a female and the uniqueness of a male. You want to understand communication skills. You want to understand how to manage emotions and how to handle anger. You want to understand the dynamic in which a woman is. You want to understand how to handle unfaithfulness, broken trust. You want to understand because if you don't understand those things, Yes, see, in all of your getting, getting understanding, you need wisdom and knowledge how to handle your significant other. Yes, you got to deal with them out of love, but you need the wisdom and the knowledge. You need to know what ticks them off. You need to know exactly what makes them happy. But you got to have a knowledge about your significant other to make it work. What you talking about, you know? Yes, that's true. What ticks you off? What ticks me off, dude? What ticks you off? Yeah. Somebody, after you done went to sleep, somebody saying, messing with you. you, you, you like, somebody turning off the fans. You, we got fans blowing all from all directions. <laughs> somebody telling you, you wrapped up in the cover and I want some cover. That ticks you off because you done went to sleep. Am I right around? Huh? I know what takes you off. I know what makes you, what triggers you. I know what, <laughs> what triggers you. <laughs> Somebody saying something that you think that they should be saying. Somebody that might know a little more about a certain subject than you do, you're going to say that they think that they know everything. Somebody who studied. Huh? Okay. Tell me all the time, she got degrees. She got degrees. I don't have, you don't have nothing but an associate. That's two facts. years. That's two years worth of college, but I got an associate. <laughs> That's a fact. I never ever said that I was the most educated person in the world. But let me tell you something. I know somebody that got five or six degrees, and my grandfather went to the third grade. And I showed you that these day he owned a Honda and 49 acres of land, a house, and multiple cars. He had the cleanest wardrobe you want to see. He fed 40 something people every time they cooked, and he never ever missed a beat. The bills stayed paid, and I ain't never heard him ask nobody for nothing. And he ain't have nothing but a third grade education, and he had to quit school and go back to the cotton field. So, what well, said this is your accolades don't define your success. It might play a part going that way, but it don't it don't define it. Cause my grandfather was successful than a lot of you people with degrees. And I do have an associate's degree. And I never ever applied it. No, I haven't. I will maybe one day. But at the end of the day, I know how to talk with a proper etiquette when I want to. But I like to say what's up and what's happening, and you my abundant shawty. But yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean. So with that being <laughs> said, let's go back to Dr. Miles Monroe about marriage. And after this video finish, my wife is gonna wrap it up, and we out of here. So make sure you listen to her closing remarks because she's gonna have some great ones. And she might, she might pray. I think she will. And then we had a video. Please, sir. The individual didn't have the equipment, the knowledge to use to fix the situation. No marriage is irreparable, believe me. But most people 
You cannot, what? <laughs> Reject something that's not available. It's a choice. Come on, Miss Cruz. So in closing, since Mr. Cruz has um, taken the floor, which he does every week, mm -hmm. and he'll say, my wife will close you out. I think he likes to do that. But um, going back to just recapping a little bit from the topic tonight on marriage, uh, which this is Marriage Covenant 101. So just some tips. Focus on your spouse's strengths rather than the weaknesses. I know sometimes that's kind of hard. When we get upset, we will focus on weaknesses rather than strengths. So encourage them. Like my husband, I've been encouraging him about his weight loss journey. Um, he's lost 21 pounds, and it's hard, but I'm proud of him. So we're going to focus on the good thing, and I'm not gonna say, and I'm not gonna sit up here and say that our marriage is perfect because it's not. Um, it's far from perfect, but it's a work in progress. And um, we do love each other, but love cannot just hold us together. We have to have that relationship with God that's gonna be that glue that holds us. Um, encourage rather than criticize. Um, I can be guilty of that. Um, when I'm upset, sometimes my mouth just pew, pew. And you know, sometimes we, <laughs> say things that you know we should not say but again that's flesh and we have to repent we have to go back and and make it right and then pray for your spouse instead of gossiping about them um if you have a friend or someone that you can um speak with or somebody who you can combine in pray for find time to pray for your spouse you see the weaknesses or you see, see things that you know that needs to be changed, just take them to God in prayer and, and tell God about it. And then we have to just learn to love each other as God loves us. And the only way that we're going to be able to love um, someone beneath their fall, flaws is that we have that personal relationship with God. So um, on that note, I just pray for the marriages that you will continue to stand strong in your marriage, continue to make Jesus the head and not the, the back. He Make him priority, and then you will see your marriage flourishing. It's not going to be perfect because no man is perfect. Only who's perfect? Who's perfect? The Father, maybe. Fa the Father is the only one who's perfect. We are, we are trying to be like him, Strive. striving to Strive. be like him. Yeah. So. Um, we're not going to be perfect. Nothing's nothing's going to be perfect. Yeah. But if we serve a perfect God, he can make it perfect for us. Yes, ma'am. Like so, that. just going to pray us out. Um, and I'm just thankful for our viewers. Thankful for God giving us another chance today. Thankful that our eyes are open to see the will and the way that God has for us, Lord. We're going to continue, Lord, to stand on your promises, oh God, yes, even though it looks different, Lord. You say the only thing that pleases you, Lord, is our faith, faith. oh God. And yes. I ask you right now to help our faith to become stronger, Lord. Help us to stand stronger on your word, yes, even God. though we see something different in our natural eye, Lord. But we stand faith. We stand on your word, oh God. And we stand firm, oh God, knowing that you are able to do what you Hallelujah. promise, oh God. I thank you, Lord, for everyone watching Marriage Covenant 101, Lord. I thank you for the marriages, oh God. I thank you for the, the people who are engaged to be married, oh God. Lord, lead them and guide them, oh God. Teach them the way, God. 
your way, Lord, which will lead to everlasting, oh God. Yes, God. Lord, we give you praise. We give you honor, Lord. I ask you to protect, Lord, everyone, oh God, under your voice, oh God. Everyone, Lord, under my voice, oh God. And I just thank you right now, oh God, that thank we you, will be Jesus. a light in a dark world, oh God. It's not a fashion or a form, oh God, but it's your spirit, oh God, that's working in us, oh God. Yes, and when God. people see us, Lord, they will see you, oh God. God. We will give you all the glory, oh God, all the praise, God, and all the honor. And it's in your son Jesus' name that we will forever pray. Amen. Amen. Marriage Covenant 101. Good night.